Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a good day. Hope everyone's coping okay during lockdown. So today I wanted to do another makeup and um, while I'm doing the makeup look, I want to do a little true crime. Um, and who I want to focus on is American serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer. So I think, I thought this would be a really interesting um, concept to do. I thought it'd be really fun. And on top of being really fun and really interesting, um, it's also also been quite educational, because um, Jeffrey Dahmer is one of the ha most high profile uh, serial killers in history, um, if not ever. Um, like he's so um, what's the word anonymous uh, throughout the world. He's so well known. You say that name, everybody knows who he is. So I just thought that'd be really interesting. So we're not going to go for any specific makeup look. I'm just going to do a nice blue eye. A simple day to day makeup and we'll just get right into the murder mystery and talking about him. Um, I think it should be really fun and it's quite interesting. Uh, if you're not into like gory things or murder mystery or anything like that and horror, like uh, this video is not for you so click off just now and go and watch some of my other videos that are a bit more fun, a bit more upbeat. But if you are, stay tuned, this is the video for you. So today's positive quote of the day is never stop learning because life never stops teaching so that's today's positive quote so let's get stuck into the video so i'm just going to start with my primer today and i'm using the Ramel perfect fix primer so jeffrey dahmer uh, was a serial killer born in massachusetts um wisconsin in america and um, he was born to lionel dahmer and joyce dahmer um, and he was also um, as a child, Jeffrey Dahmer was very quiet, very withdrawn, um, and very, very shy. Um, according to people that knew him um, and went to school with him, you wouldn't have been able to tell that Jeffrey Dahmer would grow up or would become a serial killer, a psychopath, and one of the best known, probably worst serial killers um, up to date in history. Like, in school, he was very quiet, he didn't have much friends, he kind of kept himself himself. But when you think about serial killers, right, a lot of serial killers, like, when they're younger, they're very, very withdrawn and they're very, very quiet. Like, that seems to be, like, a pattern with, like, um, serial killers for some strange reason. So, anyway, so, growing up, Jeffrey Dahmer had a very normal... Um, childhood, he grew up with his mum and dad and his younger brother uh, in Wisconsin, nice house, suburban life, front and back garden, nothing out of the ordinary. His parents did split up before Jeffrey Dahmer was a teenager, but in interviews, Jeffrey Dahmer had said that his home life was very toxic, that a uh, his mum and dad were always arguing, they were always fighting, you know, that there was always there was always issues throughout the home. So Jeffrey Dahmer said that as a child he didn't get much attention. Um that his mum was he had issues where she was like very attention seeking, that his dad was working all the time. So he felt very, very starved of attention. Um then when he was then as he got older, Jeffrey Dahmer started to realise that he was gay. And a big part of well, my theory anyway, of why I think Jeffrey Dahmer targeted gay people was because he's known in interviews, sorry, several, several, several interviews, um, to say that he didn't want to be gay. Um, and that, you know, he just... It wasn't something that he could accept and it was something that he said that he really, really hated about himself. So in my opinion, the the murders that he committed were very heinous and very gruesome. And I don't know if the reason for that is because he targeted gay men to take out his frustrations because him within himself, he could not accept that he was gay. So I don't know if he took his anger out and his homophobia on other gay men by committing these these really awful, awful crimes. Um, so, Jeffrey Dahmer um, used to, what, what he used to do, he moved in with his grandmother um, 
and he stayed with her for a few years and he came a few years sorry and he committed his first murder in 1978 um and i think as time went on jeffrey Dahmer's murders just got worse and worse and the, the murderous acts that uh, he would carry out just got worse and worse and worse so what Jeffrey Dahmer would do was he would go to gay clubs or gay bars or get male prostitutes really, really, really late at night. And what he would do is he would lure these young men home. So his first murder was in 1978. He went to a gay bar, picked up this young, like, young gay man, um, took this gay man uh, back to his home, and... Uh, and spiked the young man basically with a sedative or a, some sort of form of sleeping tablet. He then, Jeffrey Dahmer says in about his first murder, he said that growing up, he said that he always had a thing for things that were grotesque and things that were morbid. And he always kept this to himself, but he said he always had an interest in death. And he said that uh, as a child, he would go and find roadkill or dead animals or like small insects and he would like murder them or dissect them or bury them and just like cut them open and he said as a child he knew that this wasn't right and he always felt like there was something wrong with him and um, his dad had said in an interview once as well that as a child his dad was a chemist a, a chemical chemist or something like that um, and as a child his dad said that Jeffrey was quite interested in the human human anatomy and the human body, but his dad, not thinking anything of it, thought that oh, if my son's like you know, he's, he's he's just going to be like me, you know, he like, he's got a huge interest in like the human body and the anatomy, like you know, my son's going to be so. His dad and his mum and dad really never thought much about it, and his, his dad did get divorced for the mum, um. So it all started with Jeffrey cutting open animals dissecting animals, pulling their legs off their arms, eating insects, like, just a, a little taste of what was to come. And instead of taking his frustrations and his grotesque nature out on animals, he then went that step further and started to do it on humans. Psychograph! Um, so, yeah, moving on. So, Jeffrey Dahmer... Um, Met this young, this young gay man. Um, the, but I can't remember the guy's name. But, the, but the, his first kill, I think the guy was only in his. Was it must have been late, twi late twenties or something like that. So what Jeffrey did was, what Jeffrey did was he, he lured this man, this young man, into a false sense of comfort. Brought this young man back to the to his flat. This young man's thinking they're just getting back for a few drinks and possibly, what we would call now uh, would be a hookup. And can you imagine, like, how horrible that would be as a young gay person, or just anybody young in general, like, going out on a night out to just, like, enjoy yourself. And, like, this is why I think hooking up with people as well can be quite dangerous, because it's like, you actually don't know who you're going home with. Like, it's like, you know what I mean? Like, this, this young gay man had probably went home with, with other people before, and... Never thought it, no, because that's just like the done thing. It, like as young people, like we meet people in clubs, you know, we you have a one night stand, you know, you you go back and you know it's just so common. But imagine that, like, and going and having that experience, that horrible, like getting murdered and having that experience, like oh, it's just it's awful. So Jeffrey Dahmer took that young man home. Him and the young man were having a drink. Jeffrey Dahmer said he then passed out can't remember what happened he said that he woke up the next morning he said that his hands were all burst open his hands were all bloody the bed covers were all bloody and the man that he took home the night before was stripped naked and basically battered to death like Jeffrey Dahmer had basically beat this man to death and then strangled the guy with his belt and as I said um before I personally think like the frustration that Jeffrey Dahmer had, I do think for some reason, I think it all stemmed from his, his, his own insecurities and his own issues that he had with sexuality. I think it was like, 
he couldn't, he didn't like, you know, he said in multiple interviews that he didn't like being gay and he didn't want to be gay, so I think he took it out and targeted other gay, gay, gay people to take out his own anger towards himself. Um, so anyway, so Jeffrey Dahmer said, woke up, this man was battered and bruised, all bloody, and basically the guy was, the guy was dead. Jeffrey then said that he had no memory, no recollection of what had happened or what had happened to this young man, he had no idea. Uh, Jeffrey then took the guy, took took this young this young person and buried the person. Um and buried the guy. Uh, Jeffrey then said after that, that's when he got a taste for murder, basically. He said after doing it once the high that he got, the thrill he got, you know, from burying that body and, you know, he said that that's when he just, he knew that he wanted to do it again. And if you go on, uh, if you go on YouTube and you look at his interviews, he, I think he's on 60 Seconds as well, he done a few interviews um, not long before his death. He died in 1992. He was beaten to death by a fellow inmate uh, in jail. But uh, he says in an interview that uh, after doing it once, he had a taste for it, and as time went on, his crimes, you know, they just get worse and worse and worse. And as I go on with this story, you're going, it, it does get really, really worse, just to warn you guys, it, it, it gets really, really bad and grotesque and just all around horrible. So he says, after the first murder, that sense of control and that sense of power that he felt, he felt like he had to do it again. So between the years of 1978 and 1991, Jeffrey Dahmer goes on to commit 16 to 20 murders, possibly more. Um, you know, there was a lot of young men, male prostitutes, people who went missing from bars around this, around this time. Obviously, Jeffrey Dahmer didn't admit to any of it, but he only admitted to the 16, whatever, to 20 the police found, but they do think that there's a possibility he possibly committed more than that. Um, so the second murder... Um, they say so for a, so his first couple of kills go on to be it's like the same type of like idea. Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer picks picks a young man up, uh, takes these young men home, uh, basically lures lures these young men into a false sense of security, uh, a false sense of comfort, drugs them most of the time rapes them and then kills them and basically dis dismembers their, their body basically. Um, just your classic, you know, your classic psychopath. <laughs> you know, uh, basically. Um, but then as time went on, Jeffrey said that he got bored of these, what he calls like murder's murder, but to him obviously he was getting bored of the, his basic drug rape kill. You know, like, like he would kill people by like, Strip. Try contour and talk. Uh, by strangulation, um, by drugging, um, by suffocation. But Jeffrey said that after time, those kind of murders got really, really boring. And he said that he wanted to start, as he would say, he wanted to branch out. So his first couple of murders were pretty much just the same, and then Jeffrey starts to photograph these young men like it would kill them beat them suffocate them you know just commit these really he heinous awful crimes and then he would like take pictures of these men and then he would keep pictures of these dead men in a trunk that he had under his bed he would bury some of these men under his floorboards and his flat and a lot of neighbours reported getting a really really funny smell coming through the house which obviously looking back now would have been the dead, like the the dead bodies. So Jeffrey started to take pictures of the men and would keep these pictures. And when asked why, he said it was to so the men were were close to him, and it was more like a it was a souvenir for him. It was like a it was a trophy, so he could remember these awful awful acts that he committed. Uh, and it got worse. So as the murders went on. Jeffrey decided that he wanted to start eating these people and 
basically ca- uh, cannibalising them. And he said in an interview as well when he was asked about why why he felt that he wanted to engage in that and cannibalism, he said it was it started off as a like he was curious about it. Like who the fuck? Sorry, excuse my language, but who 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 is curious about eating a dead body? Like, if you are, then you really need to check your mental health. For like, if you're very on being an absolute psychopath, so he said that it started off as a curiosity. So I think by the seventh or eighth murder, that is when he decided I'm just going to start eating them. Also in his head, he thought as well that that eat, eating these people would be an 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 easy way of basically getting rid of the body. It's a quick, easy way. And he can enjoy what he's doing in some fucked up way. So Jeffrey would basically cut these people's heads off. He would cut their limbs off. He would just do these unspeakable, horrible, horrible things. He would then boil them, fry their limbs, eat them with tomato sauce. He would eat. He said he used to start. It would start with the heart. So um, he would basically fry, fry the heart. Um, and then he would eat it and he he actually boasts in an interview that he would he used to cover the heart with like tomato sauce and he boasts in an interview that it just tastes like chicken Um, and I think as well to have like his crimes it seemed to be as the years got on just got worse and worse and worse but I think as he said himself it became you know, just strangling somebody, he said that he felt like the death for this person was over too quickly. And, you know what I mean, it's not as if these, these were these were mercy killings. Like, he obviously, he really, like, really wanted these people to, to suffer. So, he would eat their hearts. And then, if that isn't bad enough, Jeffrey then starts keeping their bones, like... Cut, cutting off their heads, completely, like completely skinning these people of their, the completely skinning these young men of their skin, and then keeping their skulls as like some sort of like weird, like weird trophy, weird serial killer trophy. And when he's also asked about why he felt like he, he like why he wanted to keep body parts and why he wanted to keep limbs and stuff like that. His answer is that for him, it was a way of honouring the person and a way to kind of remember his crimes and remember the person, like... Oh, God, it's just... I can't even comprehend somebody that's got that kind of mindset. It's... Oh, I don't know. Um, And so he then said that he, he had, like, an altar... Um, in his house where he would like, put the bones and put the skulls and he would go there every day and he said that he would just sit and look at it and would like pray to it. Um, and then in between this, he then moves into his grandmother's house uh, and he, he moves in with her for a while and he says that that's when the murders stopped. So he did stop murdering, I think there was maybe a two year period where he did stop murdering, and the reason for this is because he said he started to reflect on what he was doing, and he had a wee bit of guilt. And he did say that he tried to control his, what what he calls, you know, his um, urges to, you know, and and en- en- engage in that, I suppose. And obviously, I don't think I think it was the fact that he had he had to go and live with his granny and just couldn't. Fucking m- mutilate people. I think that's the only reason he stopped. But he did say even when he lived with his gran, he took a trunk and in that trunk he had body parts, skulls, human remains, bones, everything and he kept this with him. And he said he would look at that and try and stop himself from murdering and would try and get something from just looking at these remains so he didn't have to go out and murder somebody. But after a while, the urge kicked back in. He was nearly caught one uh, once by his dad. His dad came to visit once um, and seen the trunk and was and they basically went to like open the trunk and was like, Jeffrey, what's what's in the trunk? Like what's in there? And Jeffrey really really panicked 
and was like, no, no, like, don't, don't, don't look in there, da, 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 like, yeah, stop it, like, you know what I mean, like, really, really, really panicking, because of course, because he's got limbs, everything in there, um, the dad, unfortunately, didn't, at this point in time, took Jeffrey's word for it, that it was private, and just didn't look, Jeffrey then gets his, his own flat, he then moved into 924 North Street, uh, I think that was in Wisconsin, Wisconsin, sorry, and that's when Jeffrey's heinous crimes uh, started up again. Jeffrey would then went out to a gay bar and picked up a young gay Asian man. By the way, it's also worth stating as well that before Jeffrey actually became a serial killer, he was actually charged of assault and paedophilia, which, to be honest, is like, judging by his crimes and the stuff he done, that's, that's really not surprising. So, he had, so before he even done these murders, he was well on his road to becoming a verified, you know, a verified serial killer. He was well, well on his, well on his way to become a psychopath. So he picked up this young, young gay man, um, brought this gay man home. Uh, Jeffrey then said that he, Jeffrey wanted to keep these men as sex slaves. So. What he would do was, like, this is, this is nuts, like, this, like, he would put them in the bath, torture them, rape them, drug them. He would then drill holes in the site, like, he wanted to create, like, these zombie beings that he could basically just control and would be able to, like, have his weird psychopathic way with. So Jeffrey would... But it obviously he failed and, and it never ever worked, but he did try. He would drill a hole in the side of these young men's skulls and he would then go on to fill their skulls with um, oh, stuff like acid and just stuff like that. That would basically make these people, you know, they're still alive, but they're in like a zombie state, so they can't. They can't talk, they can't walk, they're in a zombie-like state. Obviously that never worked, and one of the victims, this young Chinese man that he attempted it on, it didn't work, and the young man managed to escape. The police were phoned as this young man was found in the street naked, running around shouting for help. A neighbour phoned, and this will go on to show you like how calculated like Jeffrey Dahmer was. He came out in the street, and he managed to convince this police officer... Obviously because Jeffrey had like drugged this, this this man and you know had like like done what he'd done, the police actually really believed that this man was Jeffrey Dahmer's boyfriend and they did an argument and the guy was drunk. So the police poor poor policing on their end sent this man back with Jeffrey, believing that it was Jeffrey's partner, they did a drunken argument and the guy had ran out of the house drunk. So they basically sent this young man to his death. They basically sent the young man to his death. Oh man, I really need to fix this eye makeup. I'm too busy talking, I'm not really paying attention to my makeup. Um, they basically sent this young man to his death. The young man went back and was then, was then murdered uh, by Jeffrey. I don't know why the police didn't decide to follow this up. I, 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 I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's crazy to me as well that that they didn't that they actually be, like believed this. Like, if you've seen the state that that young man was in, why why you would believe? I I don't know. I I don't know. I can't understand it. So Jeffrey then went on to kill many many more, doing the same the same thing. He would lure young gay men back to his flat would fill them with drink, would drug them, rape them, beat them, kill them and eat them. Um, and then some of these young men he would bury under these floorboards or some he would totally eat or he would uh, skin them and keep their bones and their, you know, their, their, their remains and he would like put them at this weird altar that he had in his room. And after a while, Jeffrey's family said that they weren't allowed to go and visit him. And obviously that was because, well, you know, he's got human remains lying all over his house. So 
you know, neighbours were still complaining of a funny smell and so on. So the reason that, so Jeffrey went on to commit 16, 17 murders of young gay men that used to pick up gay bars. He would eat them, kill them, like just all, that really, really horrible stuff. Jeffrey was finally caught in 1989, 1990, I'm sure, because one of the men, he brought one of these men home. Thank God this man was able enough for him. The guy said that he got a really, really weird vibe, like a really strange vibe from Jeffrey, and was like something about this guy just like, as it might. And Jeffrey then said to the guy, uh, I'm going to eat your heart. <laughs> I'm only joking. The guy said after Jeffrey said that, he got a really weird vibe and noticed that there was something kind of like foamy, like floating in the top of his drink. The guy said in an interview that he knew straight away that, you know, that the Jeffrey put something in his drink. He said there was something, he said like, I'm not stupid, like, he said there was something floating about the top of my drink. He was acting really shady, acting really weird. He hit out with the thing about he was going to eat my heart. He said, so I got the out of there. Like, that would be me. But what, one weird comment like that, I'm going to eat your heart. Get that fire, as Gemma Collins would say, get that fire exit door. I'm off. I'm getting the out of there. Like, fuck that. Like, who makes that kind of comment? So anyway, the guy said that he's like, he made that comment about eating my heart and he's like, and I just knew straight away that something wasn't right with him. He said, as if he didn't look creepy enough, he said his house had this really, really strange smell. He said it smelled like death. Like, obviously that's from the people that were buried underneath the floor. Just so he said, I got out of there. The guy then said that before he left, he got into a... Jeffrey's, before the guy managed to leave, actually, I forgot to say that, Jeffrey caught him and Jeffrey and the guy get into a physical fight and Jeffrey tried to like pin the guy down but the guy obviously like, got the better of Jeffrey and ran out of the house and the guy said he knew straight away that something wasn't right with Jeffrey because Jeffrey tried to stop him from leaving and a fight broke out and Jeffrey tried to knock the guy out. So the guy naturally, as anybody, anybody would actually do, was the guy went to the police, told the police that he'd went home um, with, this, with this guy he said that he thinks the guy who tried to spike him uh, told the police where Jeffrey stayed. Uh, so the police then went out to obviously uh, investigate and see what actually had happened. Jeffrey states in an interview when the police got to his house, uh, the police could see that obviously there'd been an altercation because Jeffrey's house was, you know, all smashed up for fighting with one of the guys that obviously the guy that escaped. Uh, Jeffrey says that the police started to smell the smell and obviously if you're if you're a police officer and you smell that you know you know straight away like you know what you're smelling like the police guy said that you know he said I smelled that he said and I knew straight away he said that, the, that that it was the smell of a dead body he's like I just one of the police officers like I just I just knew straight away the police then asked Jeffrey if they could come inside and Jeffrey said at that point he knew that the game was up. He said he knew that the police could smell the bodies, that they could see the mess of the house. He said he just knew at that time that there was no point in trying to lie without it anymore. Uh, so the police then came in. Uh, one of the police officers went in a Jeffrey Star. Uh, Jeffrey Star. Oh my god, Jeffrey Dahmer's room and obviously seen this altar that was filled with like human remains and bones and skulls and Jeffrey says that the police officer guys just says, can you see this? And then they cuffed them. Uh, sorry, uh, Jeffrey went on, he was imprisoned and was sentenced to life in prison and he was one of the most high profile serial killer cases in modern history. He obviously went on to become one of the most prolific um, serial killers uh, of this generation, uh, I would say. Uh, his crimes were were so, so heinous and were so, so as if it was just murder, like, he is like your, Jeffrey Dahmer is your textbook, like, psychopath, like, no doubt about it, he really is.
Jeffrey Dahmer died in 1991 because he was beaten to death in jail, thank God. But to be honest, he was beaten to death by a fellow murderer, but that's another, that's, that's just another story and about its own. <laughs> so, he was beaten to death right up until the time of his death. His family actually really supported him and his dad, well, his mum not so much, but his dad uh, would still go up to the prison and visit him and still kept in contact. So he died in 1991 uh, by being beaten to death in prison. Uh, so, and then and then obviously went on to have several books written about him, several films. Um, let's make it look like a mess because I've been too busy talking. I've been, been no, I've been trying to remember what I'm talking about and not been looking at look at all. Uh, <laughs> I can't talk in makeup at the same time. Uh, he went obviously went on to become one of the well, best known serial killers, not best known, but well known serial killers in history. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this is the makeup look. It's not very good because I've been trying to talk and remember what I'm talking about while doing the makeup. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you like this, oh, that fan is amazing. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget for like to like and subscribe to my channel and comment below any other videos you'd like to see me do or talk about or any other serial killers. Um, hope you guys have a good day. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week and your weekend. Stay gorgeous and tune back in for my next video.